Hi, Mina San. Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Abby Kareen, your friendly neighborhood nerd, and we are back with community. <laughs> this is episode, what, 19 called Critical Film Studies. So I'm curious if this is going to be an Abed oriented thing. <laughs> Maybe him, his episode, just because uh, when it comes to film, our boy Abed, he knows what he's doing. So appreciate it <laughs> but we're just gonna jump in um if you'd like to see the full reaction to this episode you can find it on my patreon there we're about three weeks ahead don't forget to like leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on my social media let's do it it was my friend abed's birthday oh. i had met abed at community college almost two years earlier his obsession That'll with pop fun. culture had always alien is this pulp fiction pretend his life was a tv show yeah. he watched cougar town yeah it was as if he didn't want people to like him mm -hmm. The restaurant Abed had chosen wasn't his style at all. There were cloth napkins, no TVs. <laughs> Abed liked chicken fingers, video games, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, hell yeah, Quentin. I mean, you're dressed like Reservoir Dogs. But I loved Abed. Everyone did. So I had come there with a surprise plan of my own. Hey, uh, can I get a Macallan Neat? Jeffrey! What is going on? Buddy, I like your sweater. Did it come with a golden retriever? <laughs> you look good, too. <laughs> hey, uh, we're running a little bit late. No big deal. Just oh, a did, small speed bump. Did they have well, to hurry up? We're waiting. Oh, that's so fun. Surprise! You guys know what? Running good late. Friend. Aww. Aww. Jeff says there's some kind of I speed bump. I love the bump. Bruce Willis. Yeah, friend, I love that change. There's Bruce nobody Willis. can hear you. It's always the same. Yeah, but he's going to say cool at least five times. Mm. It's really great of Jeff to put this together. I'm not jealous. <laughs> Threatened. Cool. Threatened. Someone got him a briefcase, like in the movie. What's in it? Hey, don't touch that. It's from Jeff, and he says nobody but Abed Aww. can open it. Uh -oh. Why? What's in it? Uh oh. <laughs> Jeff's not better than me. Oh my I God. Said, mm. <laughs> Forgot this in the bar. Ah, so I did. I'm sorry. What a thoughtful gift, Jeff. What is going on? Well, that's cool of them. I guess that kind of makes them the pulp fictions of people. Man, how great was that movie? Yeah. So I sold a few of my action figures, and I bought a round-trip ticket to Los Angeles. Wait, what? You went? Yeah. When? Over spring break. What could I do? Oh. Two days after I got that invitation, I was on the set of Cougar Town, Jeff. You know, I'm talking to the director, and he says, why don't you jump into the background? I say, nah, wait a minute. Jump into the background of what exactly? And he says, jump into the background of this scene. Walk through it. Walk through Cougar Town. Character on the show. So. Become a man from Cougar Town. You know, someone born there. Someone whose name I decide is Chad. And I take my first step as a Chad. Not Chad. <laughs> Not Chad. Oh, my nose. Oh. Like, well, his first kiss on no. the big tree at Cougar Town Field. Oh. Playing soccer at Cougar oh, Town Junior nose. High. Ooh. And Chad was dead. Oh. But as Abbott, I was still alive, so someone helped me up. And the wardrobe lady came over, she gave me new pants. I thanked everyone, I apologized, and, <laughs> and I just got on a bus and went straight to the airport. Oh. Huh, okay, I'm gonna try this again. <laughs> no, I. I just want to stay hydrated. <laughs> Wondering if Abed's new best friend yeah, also to... gotten the best gift? I got Abed the best gift. Peak business hours for a nostalgic themed diner. Oh, is that true? Has that been researched? It has, Annie. After they get frightened by the evening news, many seek the comforting foods and soothing music of a pre racial America. I'm sorry, Brian. They're just a little late. I'll give you all of my tips for my next shift. Uh, all of them? Like all the tips the customers leave for you? Wow. Is there any way we can go ahead and spread that out over two years so I don't get slammed on my taxes? Damn. Oh my goodness. How? Everyone hates Britta. Oh. Yeah. Who was that? Why did he care so much about so many things that didn't matter? Yeah, who needs um, Cougar Town? Who needs any pop culture whatsoever? TV, movies, no, to hell with all of it. No. You know what I was, Jeff? I was that wallet. On the surface, a reference to some cinematic drivel, but on the inside, empty. This is the first birthday of my new life. You know, the wallet's cute, Jeff, but I'd like to exchange it for a better gift. I'm not leaving here until you've given me my first real conversation. Yay! <laughs> is this is this a gimmick, though? Is is Abed gonna be like, okay, I was just doing this for a film? A real conversation? Here's as real as I get under the circumstances. 
It's nice that you've learned to dial back your love of TV, but I'd really like you to come have a milkshake with me. Oh, you think pointing that out counts as a real conversation? You know how many fake people are talking about how fake the world is right now? Okay, well, I'm new at this, so can you start our real conversation? You know who has real conversations? Ants. They talk by vomiting chemicals into each other's mouths. They get right down to brass tacks. <laughs> Which way's the picnic? <laughs> Say she's attracted to him anyway. Well, I don't believe that happens. Wrong. That's me. I did that last week. Scared that if I were overweight, that no one would like me. <sighs> God, that feels good to admit. Yeah, good. Can I tell you something I've never told anyone else? Yes. This God, he's so cool. Whatever he got. Stinkin'. Baby chickens, diamond forks, brand name sodas. Brand name then sodas. He's gonna bring <laughs> Jeff got Abed the actual briefcase from the movie Pulp Fiction. <gasps> wow. What are you guys doing? Chang made me open it. He seduced me with his dark Chinese powers. <laughs> Why do you leave him alone with me? <laughs> I'm putting my job on the line for this stupid party, and the least you can do is not ruin it. Dude, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but... Oh, dang. You're a bad friend. Oh, dang. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, once the shame and the fear wore off, I was just glad they thought I was pretty. Some real, some real God, talk. Some real this talk. is incredible. I mean, to be able to talk this openly. What do you want? So this is what you're doing while we wait. Just go home, Pierce. The party's canceled. Pretty gay, man. Pretty gay. <laughs> Why is Pierce dressed as the gimp from Pulp Fiction? Ah. Oh. The wallet. What matters is this, talking. Is everything okay? Uh, yes, just to check, please. Oh. I'm sorry, so you're ending early? Because in my dinner with Andre, the waiter brings you back. Bye. He had it, he had something set up. What's my dinner with Andre? It's just a movie about uh, two guys talking at a restaurant. He was recording it the whole time. This wasn't a real conversation. You were doing another movie? A movie about a real conversation? That shouldn't matter. This is why we don't hang out. Well, thanks for getting me fired, jerks. The party's over. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, uh, it is. Really wish you two got along better. Oh, no, no juice. <laughs> Ovid, are you seeing? I hope that he can. Oh, no! <laughs> You're mad at me. Yeah. I spent a week planning a party just to make you happy. And then I bailed on the party and ruined it. Again, just to make you happy. Then it turns out while I was wasting my time trying to make you happy, you were making yourself happy all over everyone else by doing yet another stupid movie spoof. You think I've been avoiding you? You and I hung out more last year. Everyone else is growing and changing all the time, and that's not really my jam. I'm more of a fast blinking, stoic, removed, uncomfortably self aware type. I don't need you to grow or change. And take it from someone who just had a meaningless one sometimes emotional breakthroughs are overrated. Still friends? <clears throat> because nobody paid for dinner at the restaurant. The waiter had felt bad for spilling the beans about Abed's homage, so he let us stay. <laughs> As parties go, he was quiet, dark, and a little lame. But I doubt I'll ever forget my dinner with Andre, dinner with Abed. I really like that. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> they said market price. What market are you shopping at? <laughs> I'm going to run. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Oh, three. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> They're so funny. <laughs> oh. Well, 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 you know what? I, again, I just appreciate, appreciate Jeff Winger. I really do. Like, he is one of the most, in my opinion, 
one of the most selfless friends out there and honestly one of the best friends like his ability to let shit go is 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 astounding um because i would have been really upset <laughs> but he he still appreciates Abed for who he is and he's he's not turning away from him it's just like it's i don't know it's like he's just a really good friend and he means well and i love the effort he put in for him Abed on <laughs> and i love Abed too again like i identify so much with Abed um I think one of the, and I'm, I'm not going to try and get too deep into this one because it is, it was funny. It was good. I, it, it was just a good thing overall, but I think one of the things that, mm, I think one of the things that I guess I get frustrated about Ovid and you know, for, again, for me, when I look for friends, I, I look for people who, I mean, everyone has their own quirks and everything, but it's just like the ability to kind of, I guess, grow a bit even with our ailments or, or, or disabilities or, you know, our mental, you know, mental states. Cause like I have my own issues too. And there's things I'm very much stuck on and like, I don't know, you know, with Ovid, it's just, he's such a mystery. And for me, it would be so hard for me to like, if, if, if I was in Jeff's situation, I would be very upset about it. But like at the same time, I, this is this is what kind of what friendships are they're messy and they can go sideways and it's just like you try and do something perfect for someone and, and it goes awry but then look, I mean but still look at them all at the end of the day like they're all still together they're all still finding enjoyment and and they have a you know a friendship greater than anything in the universe <laughs> and I, I yeah I appreciate it but of course Abed like <laughs> of course Abed would do that um, interesting for Jeff to open up I, I do appreciate the fact that he, even though it was you know for a gimmick or whatever Abed was doing but I I love that he did open or, or Jeff did open up to Abed and I think maybe that will just help their friendship even more um but I don't know <laughs> he was good I love the Pulp Fiction reference I wish I hope one day I can do something that cool. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just appreciate Jeff a lot. And I'm very happy that he keeps surprising me. Because I know I said it before, but like, in the first, first couple episodes, I was just so over Jeff. But he's really grown on me. And, and his, um, his quality, his qualities as a friend is just really admirable. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, I loved it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. <laughs>